5th May 1999. Dark clouds loom over the Shillong Archdiocese once again. After a very brief reign, Archbishop Resto Pandram passed away after a prolonged illness just five years after the death of Archbishop Hubert de Rosario. The Archdiocese had to undergo without a bishop for a few months again before the appointment and installation of a new bishop. When Archbishop Dominic Jala was ordained on the 2nd of April in the year 2000, we conducted the ordination on the cathedral grounds, though it was packed with people. And yet, he agreed to have, instead of having it the, at the Calvary grounds, he agreed to have at a place closest to the cathedral. Actually, we are here, I think all of you know that this is the Cathedral of the Mary Help of Christians. And you know, Cathedral is a, comes from the word Cathedra, which means that there's a throne. A throne of whom? Throne of the Bishop. I know Bishop Jala will not like to sit on the throne, but there's a special chair reserved for the Bishop, which only the Bishop can sit. And therefore, this is the seat where the Bishop has to uh, uh, attend all the uh, big occasions, he has to celebrate all the masses and officiate all the programs, uh, the main programs of the diocese. The apostolic vision of His Grace, Dominic Jala, is very clear. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what belongs to God. He exhorted that the church's deepest nature is expressed in her threefold responsibility of proclaiming the word, celebrating the sacraments, and acts of charity. To as the Archbishop of Shillong Archdiocese, he was actively involved in the activities of the church and was dedicated to the faithful. He was also involved in the Catholic Church of the Northeast India and the Conference of Catholic Bishops of India. His deep knowledge on the Catholic liturgy was recognized and he was elected as Member Secretary of the International Commission on English for Liturgy. We move from just an individual piety that concentrates on me and Jesus to the Eucharist as a center of communion of the whole church in what is called ecclesiology of communion. He was able to balance his time and work for the church in Rome without neglecting the work in the Shillong Diocese and this will be remembered for a long time. The late Archbishop Dominic Jala was a scholar and a researcher and always ready to assist researchers. He was a guide who would always simplify the path to reach the goal. The Archbishop was very, very approachable. Very approachable and whenever we need to meet him, sometimes we can just call him, 
sometimes we can just SMS to him or sometimes we can just uh, what called email things to him and things can get done. He was very approachable and whenever he is free, we can always meet him, we can always talk to him even over the phone and there are a number of things that we can settle matters uh, in that way. Iju hikai yangi, iju ong yangi, bengi day ben hikai, wat iki pai ba iru biki day ben iye, ban sumal, bat ban buram, ya kami meriang. Long shau brio jong ble, ubaya jan ma bat ni kirang ba, kam tam um jupep, banya don lang haman laki spiritual activity jong ki samla. Kun samla be iye, ya 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 sengau shikan ban don, bat ke yukares pokoi, ya jan bat ke yukares pokoi. He loved the youth and always desired what is best for them in life. When the menace of insurgency and drugs started to hit the state and Shillong, he was very distressed and discussed the matter with appropriate authorities to find solutions to the drug menace. When we were together as churches in Shillong, dealing with the issue of uh, young people, uh, especially with the then H and LC. Bishop was one of the person or the um, man who could negotiate with them to come back to lead a normal life. And there were many people whom he had met who came over ground and they started their own life and they did well in the society. That is a big thing, one big thing that he uh, has done. He looked for ways and means to rescue youth because he knew that it ruined their lives, disturbed the family, and created disharmony in the society and country. We talk very much that how to bring up transformation to us, to our Khasi Jaitya people, how to become, how to transform our youth. He always concentrated on the youth how to bring up the youth, to bring up in the field of education and also to bring up in the many part of transformation of our Khasi Jaitya people. So in that way we share and talk from time to time. Day Archbishop Ubalasdang Pensethu Yangi Kisamla Yaka Jimpenlong Yaka Convention Kaba Shisien Haka Arsenyam Kani Kadon Jingmut Haka Ba Pelat Yangi Shibun Kijunut Jingsep but come time eh, ladangi pelong ya convention haki parish ki badang lung. For the late Archbishop Dominic Jala, there was no high or low human being, nor rich nor poor, small or big. He would welcome all with open arms to guide them and always had a smiling face. Youth and young children always got an important place and he would draw them to him by starting a conversation which was related to their life. He always expressed happiness when the youth from the rural areas, Sean, achieved success and celebrated with them. He liked very much to walk on foot, so he was able to go down and also up the hills in different villages in our archdiocese where there is no road. We has to, he had to walk on foot and uh, he, he, did, he did that. Whenever he came for the Christmas party, here at St. Mary's Convent. Our little orphan children surrounded him so freely as if a father had come to visit them. And he would spend time playing and chatting with them and they would converse with him so freely. I remember also when I was sick, he was the first person to come and to see me in the Nazareth Hospital and to see me. The late Archbishop Dominic Jala studied the Khasi language in depth and wanted that the language be used not only in education but also in the liturgy of the Catholic Church. He loved to read and he always appreciated the writers for their contribution. There's a saying that a person who reads is a person who leads. And therefore, we really need to learn from Archbishop Dominic Jala. We need to cultivate the habit of reading. I really ask young people today, I ask the students of today, please imitate the example of Archbishop Dominic Jala. He was ready for dialogue and planning 
with other Christian denominations or with people of other faiths for the good of the society. He was a firm believer in dialogue and discussion as a means to achieve peace, harmony and acceptance. Archbishop Jala was one of the founding leaders of the forum who was so sincere in trying our level best uh, to bring forward the young people who had wanted to come uh, come back to the mainstream of uh, society life. Archbishop will accompany them. He will help them, he will instruct them, and he'll bring them back to the normal life. Even he'll negotiate with the government in order that young people may be free from reprisal or from the danger. As a scholar and a keen researcher, he was fluent in Khasi, Latin, Italian, German, French, Spanish, Garo, Hindi, Greek, Hebrew and English. The task he had completed will continue to stand as testimony of his contribution in this field. The work which we would like to remember is the translation of the Roman Missal into Kasi. I am so privileged to be part of that translation. And while translating the Missal, I could see the wisdom, the knowledge of the Archbishop. I did the translation, he did the correction. And when, for certain Latin words I, which I do not understand, when I ask for a meaning, he will not give just one meaning, but he will give its meaning in many languages, in French, in Italian, in Latin, and in German. Then we could get the right word. He, leave, he left the choice of words to me but he would give all the options. That was Archbishop Dominic, a man of wisdom, a man who really knew the liturgy. He was always available to his brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews and relatives when in station. He was a leader who admonished, a guide who was with them in times of joys and sorrows. He was a firm believer that the path to problem solving was prayer. Bunkam, Mo, Nakapor, Kapor, Henry Walakataru, O Poisian, Kamtama Badon Bastum, Butting Ting, the one thing one nationalist style, the Lamid, whom you pep and one room had a poor young me, Nanta, and Payaki Paraki Persa. Bobrio was no rip, Bobrio, but much oiki dup, it is soap, it rang lee, it a. ຄົນອ້ວນຍາຮັບອຸມຈຸກຂັນຍະລະດີຂອງກະຕັກກະດັນບິຊອບຮູ້ກະຈິງອຽດຈົງອຽກະນີກະຍິງອີໄມກະອ
ฮาปอรอมันจันบดนปอบเฮทุกมตุมันกะสเตปรูเนียพวนอิเวเวอไอเลเมรสเตปซันสติงเลียคีเมรสเตปดบากะสตังกะจิงเลเนียมาดูเ
so that's how long we go back and that's how the relationship with uh, archbishop dominic jala between him and my father and obvious obviously between him and me continued and uh, in fact i cherish every moment that i spent with him especially from the time when we prepare for the, his body to come to uh, to arrive to uh, india uh, during these days, almost 10 days, uh, that we had the Holy Mass. And uh, the cathedral church was full every evening. We can see how the people love him so much. We can see how the people uh, were really shocked with this. Finally, his remains reached Shillong on the 20th of October 2019. It was a very emotional return. The body of the deceased Archbishop was accompanied by priests, officials of the government, Catholic Association Shillong Archdiocese and relatives. His mortal remains was taken to Joseph's co-cathedral, Guwahati, where a requiem mass was conducted before it was taken to Shillong. Today, I also want to thank the Administrator for John Madur and his companions for allowing us to have the mortal remains of our Archbishop Dalla in our midst so that with the remains we could celebrate in this holy mass, thank God for him and at the same time pray for him. All of us in the province of Guwahati and beyond, we were woken up to be greeted by the most tragic and sad news of the untimely, unexpected, and the tragic demise of our dear and most reverend Dominic Jala, STB, Archbishop of Shillong, Apostolic Administrator, Long Son Diocese, and former provincial of the Silesian province of Guwahati. On the way to Shillong, the mortal remains was also taken to Burnihat Parish, Nongpo Parish, Omsning Parish. Along the way, people lined up to witness the mortal remains of the Archbishop being carried. Nang abor jung me nalapan long yingi wan wan she ganie kapertei nang jinge da jung me mesumar sukher yek jingim jungi bara ko kum jung me nilet biang she gadong mer.
The state for the first time witnessed such a memorable moment where people stood and wept at every nook and corner throughout the national highway towards Shillong. It was indeed a very touching moment. Later, the remains were taken to Maulai Parish where the faithful had waited eagerly to bid farewell to the most beloved Archbishop and later the body was taken to his house at Maulai Pudmuri. On the following day, the body was taken to Nazareth Hospital to properly embalm and to examine whether the remains were fit to expose or not. After a thorough inspection, the hospital authorities declared that the body would be enclosed inside the casket. The body was brought here we, we, in the presence of uh, Father John Madhur and uh, 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 Vincent Palansar and uh, they had already opened the body and so and the body was um, in a good uh, way but it was told I mean should not be exposed. Uh, that's why the body was closed at that time. The late Archbishop's body was shifted from Archbishop's house to the cathedral on the 21st of October 2019, where it was laid for the faithfuls to pay their last tributes.
On the day of his funeral, which was the 23rd of October 2019, more than a lakh came to bid farewell to the most beloved Archbishop. It was a grim day where sadness and tears enveloped the atmosphere of the funeral service. Heartfelt condolences poured out during the service. Even our Honourable Prime Minister Narendra Modi expressed his grief over the sudden loss. Archbishop Jala offered a life devoted to prayer. In prayer, he discerned the voice of the Lord saying, Follow me. Throughout his 41 years of priestly life, he did not place any barriers in the way of original summons which God placed in his heart. Prayer was not just part of his life. It was central to his life and uh, enabled him to distinguish God's footsteps among the welter of interior noises. Whether I live or die, I am with him and Jala is with him. After the service, the body was taken to the tomb, which was prepared outside, adjacent to the left wing of the cathedral next to the Chinese pine tree. For our Archbishop Dominic Jala, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Mercy Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son and of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord.
His sudden and untimely demise is a great loss not only for the priests and co-workers in the Archbishop House, the religious, the brothers and sisters, the relatives, the faithful of the Archdiocese of Shillong, the people of Meghalaya, Northeast India, but also of India as a whole and the Church. So I think it's a very, very uh, big loss not just to the Catholic Church, but it's also a big loss to society, to the state of Meghalaya and to the Northeast as a whole. And uh, late Archbishop Dominic Jala will always be remembered as a person who was respected by all across different faiths, a person who was truly humble. And we will all miss him, but I'm sure that his thoughts, his ideas will always be there with us. And I'm sure that even in the days and years to come, late Archbishop Dominic Jala will always Bless us. Try not to scare the deer at the same time. So look at that, the deer is looking at him. Two of them. Uh, one more is here. Yeah, he's trying to talk to them. As Catholics, we have lost a shepherd. Yeah. And we trust that God in his goodness will fill the vacuum that has been created. As we join in constant prayer, we trust in the divine plan of God. We pray that God grant him eternal rest and his soul rest in peace. Hagani ka juk dungi manta la khot yangi kum ki khun kristan ban ong ngi long na em ki briu ki pakloi ban yu i ka kiti jung ublai ka patrai habun rukam habun ki briu ka takumut ka balang jungi ka dei hoot ka balang ka thlik ba mangi ngi ngai ka ne ka dei ka balang ka thlik ba khuit ba ngi ngai na mar ba ngi tip ngi don haka ba ngi yo bon ki ai ka haka ba ngi yo ka ne ka jing hikai ka ba pun sisa ba ngi don ha ka ne ka met ba mayan jung chris Yeah, here I am standing in front of the door of the office of the Archbishop. The office of the Archbishop was closed from the moment the Archbishop died. That is the custom that we used to do in the, the, church, in the church of in the Catholic Church. So we keep always this door open, sorry, closed, uh, because many things are there in the office which people should not uh, know, only the bishop and those who are appointed to know the many things that are there in the office should know. So since the Archbishop is no longer with us, so therefore the Archdiocesan Administrator has taken over the administration of the Archdiocese and he has the power to appoint some priests to be able to open the office and to see what are the things there in the office of the Archbishop. So three of us, please, Father Richard Machau, Father Jimmy Marner and I were appointed to be able to open the door of the office of the Archbishop in case of need. So we have already done something in the office. We have arranged the papers, many types of papers there and many other things that we have or the arranged the office since the death of the Archbishop. So we have done what we are supposed to do. Three of us, please, who have been appointed 
of course, with the knowledge of the Archdiocese and state of the Archdiocese. This is his sleeping room, and this is the uh, shelves where he keeps so many kinds of books. And also, uh, the other side, there is a big shelf where he keeps many books. And his uh, uh, sitting place is this one, the office here. The, the, the all the works are done here in this office. And the guests who come to see him uh, ask to sit in front of his table here. And whatever is needed to, to be talked to him, usually he comes up here and he would talk with the person who comes to talk to him. And that big table there is a table used for a big meeting, a kind of conference, especially when the bishops of Northeast India come here to have a meeting, the Archbishop used to have a meeting there together with them. Drawers where the different types of files are kept and uh, the drawers are kept in such a way that uh, a particular file will be kept in a particular drawer and also there are uh, drawers for many uh, parishes and also uh, the dioceses of Northeast India. So all the files that are uh, uh, about one particular parish should be kept in that particular drawer and all the files that are related to particular diocese would be kept in that particular drawer of that diocese. So these are the many drawers. Also the files uh, of the religious congregations uh, of men and women religious uh, congregations would also be kept here. So there are so many files that no one should uh, perhaps uh, come to know because there are many things that the Archbishop has the only authority to know what are the content in the different files.